speaks of doesn't have anything to do with the way you dress. If it did, the Pharisees and the scribes would have been able to, they'd been fine. Because Jesus said, you look good on the outside, but inside you're, you're like sepulchers. You're beautiful and white on the outside. On the inside you're full of dead men's bones. There ain't no bigger hypocrite than somebody with the bun or with the long hair and the long skirt and the long sleeve standing there running down their brother and sister. Amen? Oh, you might have the outside of the cup and the platter, platter clean, but inside you are still filthy and need something from God. Amen? You should not be able to stand there in all your righteousness. And this, some people, I see them in Walmart, I dodge down the other aisle because I know that they're going to run down somebody when they get to me to talk. Amen? I ain't joking. I've heard their voice in Walmart before pushing my cart, and I thought, oh no, I got to go down this other aisle because I know they fix them to talk and run somebody down as soon as I see them. Every time you see them, oh, that church over there, they just ain't no good. That preacher, do you hear what he did? And I don't want to hear that stuff. I'll pray for them, you pray for them, you shut your mouth. Amen? If you're going to talk about anybody, do it on your knees because you know what that lets you know. Yeah. You know what that lets you know, Brother Slees? If when they see you, they're running down me, more than likely when they see me, they're running down you. Amen? More than likely, if they'll run somebody down to you, they'll run you down to somebody else. And Jesus said, you're hypocrites. That's what He said to the scribes and the Pharisees over there in Matthew, the 23rd chapter. He said, you're blind. You strain in a gnat and you swallow a camel. Amen? He said, you may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within you are full of extortion and excess. He said, you're blind. Cleanse the inside first. And then He said, the outside may be clean also. In other words, once you get the inside clean, it's going to begin to surface. It's going to begin to show itself on the outside. Once you get the light inside of you and it begins to drive out that darkness that's in you, it'll begin to ray out of you and into other people's lives the light that He said shine before men that our Father in Heaven would be glorified. And then they will know who your daddy is. They won't have to say, well, I wonder if they really knew Jesus. Honey, I've stood by the graveside. You might say you can't tell if somebody's saved or not. Only them and God knows. Oh, I beg to differ. I have stood by the casket of some people and by their graveside and I knew that I knew that I knew who their daddy was because of the fact that I knew them and that light that they had in them shone forth in my life. And I knew that they had the same daddy that I did. Amen. Many times I have rejoiced not because of the loss, because I miss them, but because I knew they made it home. And he said unto the, to them there that in Matthew the 23rd chapter, he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you are like unto sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones. He said, On the outside you appear righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Well, wow. Next time you catch yourself running somebody down, catch yourself. Amen. And stop before you carry it on any farther. Some people, I'm glad when they shut up and when I get away. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, talking about the fruit. I'm closing. Say, Brother Billy, what is the fruit then that he's talking about? If he ain't talking about the way you dress, and he's not. And like I said, not that that don't mean something. I ain't saying that. Galatians 5 and 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is this. Love. Now see, this is the nature of God. This is how others see God in you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the with the affections and lust, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. He says, by their fruit, you will know them. The world will know who your daddy is by the love that you show, by the long-suffering that you show, by the gentleness that you show, by the faith 
that you show by the forgiveness. I'll throw that one in there that you show because it's, it, it comes forth from these things that we're talking about from the fruit of the Spirit. When we begin to have these other things, forgiveness also will be something that we will begin to do. And say, Brother Billy, I can't do it. Oh, yes, you can. He said for us to pray, Lord, forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors. It is a choice of ours today whether we continue to harbor that against people or whether we hit our knees and say, God, help me to forgive them. Help me to get past that. Help me to forgive and to go on and to love them in spite of everything that's happened. It is our choice. Our choice. And then they will know who our daddy is when we begin to show forth the fruit that our daddy, amen, his nature, and they will know. Oh, listen to this. This is good. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. I'm closing. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we received mercy, we faint not. Now what ministry is he talking about? We'll find if we go ahead and read these next few verses. Listen to this. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Did you hear that? Listen to this. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, how many received mercy this morning? We faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. How is this truth manifested? In your actions, in your life, in the fruit that you bear. Brother Sleece, it is manifested. It says, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. When you begin to show forth the actions and the nature of your Father, then that begins to automatically deal with the conscience of men that watch because they understand then that something is different about the way they just acted. If that had been me, I would have gave them a cussing. If that had been me, I would have gave them a finger. If that had been me, I would have gave them a piece of my mind. That's what's wrong most of you. You done gave so many pieces away, you ain't got much left. If that had been me, I sure would have told them something. Well, won't you just shut up and listen to the Word of God? Amen? Show forth love. Let your new nature, your godly nature, the attributes of your daddy take over and begin to treat them the way that you'd have them to treat you. Begin to love them, forgive them, speak softly to them instead of telling them off. And then those that stand around and watch, and they do, they do, with your own actions, you know that? How many times have you saw somebody act up and as you left you told your wife, do you see how they acted? Did you see how that person, do you hear what they was doing? They were cussing them out, telling them off. Do you see what they did? Same thing with you. Except when you act like your daddy, your heavenly daddy, they're like, hmm, something different there. They really treat that. I, I wish I could be like that. I wish I had that. Oh my goodness. They don't think that when they see you throwing a fit. When they see you and that hatred and that unforgiveness and that bitterness and that wrath, Brother Sleeves, nobody ever walks away thinking, sure wish I had that. Yeah. Sure wish I acted like that. I sure wish I had that in my life. I sure wish I was that way. No, they walk away with their head and they're thinking, man, that's pitiful. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. And that's what most of the world has done. They've looked at the church and they've decided... I don't want what they got. Yeah. I've seen how they acted and I don't want what they got. Because you ain't letting them see the acts of your heavenly father. Maybe you're of your father, the devil. The devil. <laughs> Amen. If you ain't, certainly some of the actions that you've been showing for the Lord. If you leave them thinking, I don't want nothing that they got. Listen to this. I'm closing. How many times is that? Three. <clears throat> Listen to what he says. Oh, this is good. I could spend all day on this, but I ain't going to. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear that? If you hide your light, who are you hiding it from? 
If you hide your relationship, see, some Christians are they're undercover. Deep undercover. You know, nobody knows. You've seen those, uh, you've heard about or maybe you've seen on your television cop shows or something, they'll, they'll send a guy into this organization, mama, and he'll be deep undercover. Nobody even knows that he's a cop except for one or two. Maybe nobody but him and the boss. Really? Maybe that's the way it is with you. You so deep undercover. Nobody knows you born again but you and God. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that preach this morning. Somebody help me. You're so deep undercover, nobody even knows you're born again. You mean tell me you go to church? I didn't know that. You should have told me that last night when we was out there boot scooting. I went with you. Oh my goodness. Don't still think I could get that job that they offered in the paper? <laughs> if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, Brother Rodney. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, whose image is of God, should shine unto them. Shine how? What were they talking about? Jesus said, let this light that is in you shine before men so that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He's telling us here that gospel that is in you, that change that is in you, that nature that is in you, let it shine forth so that those that have been blinded by the God of this world and cannot see can see this light and want what you've got because they see that you act like your daddy and they want the same thing. They want the same thing. Listen in. Should shine unto them. How does it shine unto them? It shines through you. Amen. You either leave somebody better off or worse off. Amen. When your life is over, there will be people that you come across, you know, in your lifetime that you either left them better off knowing you or worse off. I don't know about you, but I want to leave a greater number of those that knew me, I want to leave them better off than worse. Amen. Hallelujah. I, don't, I want them saying, you know, I'm glad I knew that man. I don't want them saying, you know, I'm glad that man gone. Amen. More importantly, the life that he showed, showed me that he had a relationship with God. Amen. He goes on to say, still in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Talking about letting your light shine before men. If you're born again, a child of God, my goodness, I can't close. I got two more pages. No, I'm fixing to close. James said in the third chapter, the tenth verse, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. If you're a born-again child of God today, you should walk like a born-again child of God today. You should talk like a born-again. And I'm not saying we don't mess up. Oh, I've messed up over the years. I'll mess up some more before I get out here. Amen? But be willing to confess that. You know, Jesus told him one time, He said, when you come to the altar to pray, or when you come to bring your gift, if you remember that somebody's got a quarrel against you, if you remember that somebody's holding something against you, if you remember that you did something to them, maybe they're mad at you. He said, you get up and you go make it right. And then come back to the altar. How many times have we done that? No. We fight with our brothers and sisters and we hold unforgiveness, yet we come meekly before the throne. Yeah. Oh, Father God, forgive me. Forgive me your mercy. And God's probably thinking, well, what about, what, why ain't you giving some, this mercy and forgiveness and love to somebody else that you're wanting me to give to you? Mm -hmm. yeah. How many times have we went and thought, oh, I can't ask God for forgiveness because I haven't forgiven this guy over here. Will you forgive me? But I ain't done nothing. You know how many times I've had to apologize and I still don't think I've done nothing. <laughs> Amen? But to make things right, who cares whether you've done anything or not? If it's going to make things right between you and them and you and God, go and tell them I'm sorry. Whatever part I played in making this bad, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And then if they say I ain't going to do it, there ain't nothing you can do about that. Say I'm going to pray for you and go back and get on your knees and begin to talk to 